Good morning everyone welcome to my channel. So today I'm just going to work again on my um, title page for my blue but before I do I've had a couple questions in comments that I just wanted to um, show you the answers to so that um, if you wanted to sort of take on some of these suggestions it's early in the stage and it might just set you up for a little bit of organizing so um, the questions were how do i arrange my bits and pieces so that i don't get in a mess firstly it's a mess don't think that i've got this nutted out completely as in storage because it just still gets out of control but i'll show you how i'm sort of wrangling this uh, project now the container that you can see here in the blue i got from big w in uh, australia and it actually is part of a um, piece that like that is easily how tall is that it's nice and deep and i use it so much if i go away i can put a lot in it plus have that storage that's about five and a quarter inches tall and this tray, this tidy tray, sits in the top. So what I thought I'd do at the moment, I've got the two projects together. And as you know, I'm doing blue and red. So in the bottom here, I've got all of my threads. And at the moment, any bits of lace that sort of tend to go between the two projects, because the common colour is this um, soft champagne between the two projects that is in there at the moment there's only two pieces but if that gets out of control this may need to be split into two separate containers a blue and a red so at the moment all my threads are in there and if i do go to sit on the couch i can just throw my pin cushion in and my little scissors and my tray and i'm away so that's how i do my threads and i have a feeling this is going to end up in a second container. It won't hurt to have a second one because they are very handy. Now, um, of course, my beads are also mixed, all right, in the top. So that's the first component. So that's beads and threads organized. As for fabrics, I've got three of these containers, which I got from Officeworks. It's like a little mini suitcase. See the clips? probably seen them in videos before where they've just sort of been something I've been reaching at and they open up just undo those clips whoops it's upside down they open up like a briefcase and in there I've got everything to do with my blue project okay but only the fabrics that are of the blue nature and that's why I've got three. So in here will be all my blues. Then I have a red one and I have a neutral one. You know, there's in your project, you might just want some nice uh, neutral spaces and hemp and things like that. I'm just leaning over my desk to grab it. So the red one I've got open and is just exploding. So I can't show you that one at the moment, but this is the neutral one. So in here is special fabrics that I've collected, packs from Rachel, packs from other people around the, the world, um, my neutrals, and then just some fabrics that I had that I might be able to do in some embroidery on. That's the bottom of the blouse that I've cut off, um, the rest of the blouse to make my closure on my blue book. And in there is also the numbers that I'll need for the advent calendar. So that makes the third one um, all sorted. So I like the fact that I can just lock it up. It's all closed. I can take it anywhere, depending on what I want to work on, whether it's just to another room or to someone's place because we're you know, having dinner and a movie and sitting around. So I've got three of those and then my tidy box with the beads and the threads in the other one which I do think is going to be split into two colours. So storage wise, that's what I'm using. I could probably start a fourth one, which would hold the actual journals. But at the moment I haven't, but I probably should. 
and then I'd have four tidy boxes. Um, I'll just show you this while we're here. I think in the last video, I pinned scraps onto the corner of the blouse, which is gonna be my closure around my advent calendar. Um, and I just did some random stitching. So this one here in the corner, I followed the corner until I ran out of space, popped a bit of blue on that white one. This one here, a white outer edge. I didn't stitch up this little edge here because there'd probably be a piece of fabric go over it. So it wasn't worth coming up that side. Did some X's in there, just some Boro stitch there and there some seed stitch and this little piece of fabric had a little um like a fern leaf that was coming down on it so i decided to highlight it with just some random stitches um and then the paisley once again just around the outer edge so they're now secure and um ready for embellishment so being that this is so plain i might start with something here and then work out from there you know, beads, buttons, flowers, yo-yos, bits of lace, who knows. So that's sort of just a, a bit of an update on that. Um, my scraps are in place and it's just all stitched down. So it's going to be handy to have this as my closure because it is sort of tidying up bits and pieces that are sort of lying around. Um, I think I mentioned in the last video that this was going to be my cover. It's not. I made an error there and I did attempt to write a little message on the video when I was editing it to say that that's not the case. It's still on the inside of the cover. So I am still to work out um, something for there at a later date because at the moment I'm working on the blue one. Now, the blue one... I um, mentioned that I would probably need to go and buy some beads. So this is where I'm at with it. So I did go to the bead shop because I wanted a bead to go on this holly. As you can see, I actually unpicked the line of beads that was here too. I just didn't like it. So I snipped them off and I end up putting some um, a more of the little piece of, I've just gone blank. What do they call that again? tatting and then I put some um, oh gosh why am I just not coming to mind it's cheesecloth it, it sort of pulls apart there's some there in that flower I'll bring it up to the camera I had it lying in my um, workstation and it's been sitting there since the last project so I've twisted it around that flower so the flower looks fibrous and then I put some under the tatting. So it's just sort of hanging out like random little threads. And then of course I undid the beads because they just didn't look right. I couldn't find beads small enough. I really wanted some little seed beads in there. I couldn't find them. The ones I did find were just the wrong color. They look good when they're in mass and they look like they'd work. But when you undo them and the light sort of starts bouncing around them, I don't know if that really helps. Yeah, that's better. They're like a, a royal blue. They're not that denim dark blue, the midnight blue. So they just didn't work. So I thought they might be okay, but I don't know. They're not going to work. They might in another page if the colors are sort of right. Um, but I did find some other beads. I found lots of other beads. So I might, I'm going to show you what I found and then I'm going to do some bead work because I've been working down here around this flower, just clustering the beads. So you can sort of see there's three in particular that I got that I just love. This guy, that one, that one, and that one. They are beautiful. They're crystal. Oh gosh, that shop. There's my puppy dogs whooping. That shop down at um, Browns Plains. I was doing well. I had these in my hand and it was like $4 for all those beads, which is just fantastic. But then as I was leaving, thinking, oh, I've got a blue, I've got a nice dark red. They'll be good. I went through the crystal section where they sell them as strings. And oh boy, did I do some damage there. But um, I actually got more true colours that I think 
will really work. So there they are again down here, a blue, a champagne, and a, another blue. That's the blue I wanted in the seed beads, but they didn't do them that small. I got one here that is not too bad in, size, in color, but it was too big for here. So I ended up just doing some little French knots. And then the little um, flower, um, the leaves, I had plans of stitching them all. But as I did it, I like buried the design because it's so fine, it just become a blob. So I decided just to do the stem of those. And it actually was a cream anyway. So I just highlighted the little branch with some little seeds, uh, not seed beads, French knots. So you can see the textile, uh, textile texture. Gosh, there's that word again. Texture in there, just with that little bit. You can see the winter wonderland. What else have I done? The dogs are running crazy. They're having fun. They've had breakfast and now they're frolicking. And you see how I've just poked in a bit of that cheesecloth around there. So the flowers I'm planning on embellishing the centers some more. They already come with this little diamante. And they sort of look a little bit plain, especially once I started weaving these beads around this corner. <clears throat> Those two buttons were off of the uh, linen shirt that I cut down for the closure and I popped them in my basket. Well, they've now found a home. Um, and that is the center of the flower where I'm just popping in some random little beads plus one of the new ones I bought. So the beads that I'm working with in general, I've got some itty bitty ones in the champagne and the pearl. So they're tiny. So they're really good once you get your feature beads in. And the feature beads aren't actually these two. They're just the second size. So I'm getting bigger as we go. And then my feature beads, which are the ones I bought yesterday, I've still got them on the string. So I hope I don't lose beads everywhere, is this one. So what they've done is they've mixed a matte and a shiny and they're crystal. So they're just beautiful. That one, this is the pale blue, once again, a matte and a shiny. So I think I paid $4.50, maybe $5 a string of these, which I didn't think was too bad because even at Spotlight, I would have paid probably a third less in size probably around the $7 mark. And I sort of wait until they go on 30% sale to try and save a few dollars. And um, they would have been probably that long where I reckon I've got a lot more for my money. And I think they were $5 plus I'm supporting a small business. So I just, oh, I love that. It's worth the drive. It's about half an hour away, but we were down there anyway, doing some other shopping. So my husband was like, you want to go, don't you? And I'm like, yep. And that's the third one. So as you can see, they just match in beautifully. I wish I had have got, was able to get a smaller version of them all, but doesn't matter. They'll be my feature bead through the whole journal. I think I'm going to really enjoy playing with those. I'm just going to move them up here out of the way. There's a couple loose ones there, which I'll get stitched down while we're chatting before I have chaos here. There they are, just sitting there. So that is what I'm currently stitching onto my panel. Um, was there anything else I had to sort of mention there? I did French knots. I think that was in my last video, I sort of carried on doing those. I've put the feature bead around the outer edge where I've done a stitch bead, stitch bead. So I thought that looked pretty good. Um, I don't think there's much else. So I've really just been working on these, these clusters through here from my new beads. I do have this charm. It's a little bird looking onto a nest uh, of pearls. I'd love to pop it in here somewhere, but I honestly just haven't found the right spot. I don't mind that spot. And I don't mind it tucked in under the flower a little bit, which is sort of, I'm not even showing you, which is sort of my main preference because it's got a little attachment point and it's 
really designed to hang on a chain. So stitching it down is a bit tricky because it's sort of going to just flip around. So for a start, that's going to be seen if I'm going to stitch it. So I thought if I tuck that underneath the petal there, it won't be as obvious that it's, um, you know, flipping around there. And I sort of like that it's a little bit disguised. So the more you look at the piece, the more you see. Actually, I will put it there. Let me grab some cotton. I'm going to use something fairly strong to hold it. Okay. Let's just grab a little bit of that. I'm just going to show you the beads I bought. I've got sidetracked already. That's all right. We'll finish the video with a, a look at the beads. She was photographing beads to put on their website. So I'm guessing they actually have quite a good website because she looked like she knew what she was doing with getting light onto them to show people what the bead would look like. So you may be able to do an order online and go to the crystal section and have a look at the beads in there and you might be able to spot the ones that I actually purchased because I think um, I think they're going to be fantastic for this project so I've chosen a quite a heavy heavy crochet cotton to stitch this little charm on and I've tucked tucked that up in there and I'm hoping it'll hold yeah it will that's good <clears throat> so I'll just finish that off with a knot at the back Oh, that's lovely. I was thinking it was going to be the owl's nest. He's sitting, or she, no, he, let's say it's a boy, and he's just watching over those eggs. Okay, let's move this up a little bit. I've got all my beads open, and I just know what's going to happen. I'm going to knock them. I was beading on the couch last night, those fine little pearl beads, and oh boy, they were flipping everywhere. So I thought this morning I'm going to set up on the, my craft table and just do a heap of beading because taking it to the couch is just, you know, disaster waiting to happen. So I, I love that. That's sitting really well. That's not flopping around too much. It's nice and secure. It's tucked in there, the little birdie sitting on the cage. It mat Those pearls blend in with all of the work that's around the flower. So pretty happy with that. I've got the name of the fabric that I'm using. I probably should put a little bit more lace in there as well. Let's grab that because <clears throat> I've got that little piece there. So I'm just going to snip off just a little one just to sort of add a little bit more interest. Where can we put it? Maybe I can poke it. Is that the right way? It's fiddly, but it's worth the, the effort. Yeah, just a little touch of it in there. I think it's around the wrong way. Okay. Got needle and thread. Yep. So I'm just going to now stitch that little tuft of lace in there as well. Technically not a scrap because I've cut it off, but, but that's okay. The great thing about these little panels is you can do little details like this. Because our panels are small, they're not um, too big that you would lose interest. I do run the risk of that with my enclosure because it's such a big wrap around. And I thought, oh boy, there's just hours and hours of work in that. And then I thought, well, maybe I need to come up with some more embroidery in amongst all of the snippets. Something, you know, that can be 
added in it so you sort of nearly get a breath um, what I'm doing now is I've cut another piece and I want to stitch it into the folds of the flower so it looks like that lace is part of that flower and there's a bit of a flat spot here I've also popped the odd bead in there as well I did that a um, couple days ago when I was doing this side so I'm just going to place that there in the fold I've got my needle already in position and I'm just going to catch catch it down it starts to give your flower a little interest okay just a couple stitches this thing's not going through the washing machine so don't think you've got to do 20 stitches to secure something because you don't it's just protected within your book so it's not going anywhere a couple little stitches It'd be different if you were embroidering something on a wedding dress and beading you'd have to really make sure everything was secure I might even put one of those gold beads in there drifting drifting the, the beads up into the flower they're like my new favorite toy stuck together looks like they've got a coating on the crystal to give it that I can't break it apart one of the two of them will fit in there yeah <clears throat> they're actually joined together due to the process of making them shiny they must have smeared a little paint so I'm going to leave them together that's fine and just stitch them into the folds of that flower just as a little bit of sparkle I won't go around the whole flower doing this so I think you only need a little touch of it here and there a little bit random it's like the the beads on the branch have drifted in so I'm just ending that off it's nice and secure a couple little knots okay so there we go I've got my little nest charm I've popped a little bit of lace there and a little bit of lace in there and then in there is nestled a couple of those crystal beads I like that that sort of has finished that that's finished it nicely um, uh, we might do a little bit more embellishing like that in the flower. How are we going? 22 minutes. That's all right. There's so much to do on this. I do want to do some seed stitch, but I thought, which was my plan this morning, but I thought I'll leave that and it's good for sitting at the couch where I just need needle and thread. This beading business <clears throat> is... Um, finicky on a couch especially a recliner that rocks <laughs> and then as I'm looking up to a TV because I'm watching a movie and I'm sort of swinging my hands around so yeah it's best I do that on a flat surface so and I don't think I've ever beaded with you guys on film so I thought oh well turn on the camera it's uh, this video will actually air probably Thursday um, so by the time where you're watching this with me we will know what the next prompt is which will be super cool so looking forward to that the video that you will have watched yesterday where'd that bead go that's completely disappeared into the folds of the flower that little pearl oh well he's in there I might put a bigger one in um, what was I saying so yeah this video will be Thursday we'll know the prompts and the video you've just watched yesterday is all about some Christmas books that I found in my stash sorry about the dogs guys they've had their breakfast they've had a nap and now they're running because we've got this pup I think he's four months 
and then we've got pepper that's banded the four month old and we've got pepper who is 18 months so you can imagine it it's just life is good puppy running if you want to see what bandit looks like a couple months ago i did a series of videos where i restored a sewing box and i was actually at a house at um, barham heads visiting family and i took the projects um well took supplies to do needlework and then i um inherited a little sewing box from a family member and in the process of it i could see she was like oh my goodness that's my sewing box gone forever she'd had it when she was at primary school and there was even a piece of embroidery inside <clears throat> so as a bit of a project on holidays i decided to restore it and give it back to her and it's a three-part series so if you haven't seen it go looking for it because at the end of one of them i'm not sure if it's the second video it might be the last one in the series um, I filmed myself down at a lake um, with Bandit and it was his first time playing in water and it's very cute and he's so little he's uh, got a lot bigger since then they grow so quick that little bee disappeared too so if you did want to see my little woofer go and find the sewing basket restorations three videos i'm pretty sure it's the second video but it's also based on a snippet roll being created to line line the uh, walls of this little sewing basket so it's worth a, a look because we're doing snippet rolls on this project if you haven't done one already that is so I'm just grabbing one of these little denim blue beads and that's going to be my little pop of blue in the center. I'm only going to use the pale bead because I haven't been looking at the camera or the TV to see how my hands are going. So I, I do apologize if you're not seeing real clearly, but Pretty much the rule of thumb is you put two stitches through each bead that way if it does break the thread at some point you've got that second one there holding it so that's a bit of an old old trick two stitches on every bead it does make the process slow but it does settle the bead a bit one stitch you'll find the bead is very wobbly but if you put that second stitch in that bead and it really is quite secure. Okay, so I've just knotted that off. I'm just gonna knot my thread while I'm here. Okay, so there's my little flower all embellished. So I've got one more to do up here. So let's get the little pale denim one in first. And then it's just a smattering of so went before I get going with the bead I just do a couple little stitches first just to get that thread secure and then I pick up my bead every time I bead I think of my grandmother making wedding dresses for her entire seamstress career and beading oh my goodness she used to bead the bodices of all these dresses mine included and it just takes hours of work the little bit i do i couldn't imagine embellishing the whole bodice of a wedding dress and it's really just pearls pearls maybe the odd crystal but pearls especially in the 90s and 80s where she was really making a lot of those styles of dresses they probably didn't be too much in the 70s and 60s but um, definitely the 80s we all look like meringues well I did lots of beads and then she had motifs of lace all over the skirt and down the train and she beaded them as well I guess she's probably stitching them onto the fabric so I guess it's 
being secured into position, it's, I guess, no different to sort of pick up. You'll probably notice I'm not doing two stitches here because the little seed stitches, the seed beads hold okay. Yeah, so she's stitching um, the, the lace motifs onto the skirts and the trains of these wedding dresses to pop a bead on as well in the process is probably not as bad as I'm thinking, but still, it's a lot of work. So the little seed stitches, I'm being a bit sneaky here and only doing the one stitch in them because they're tiny and they'll hold. <clears throat> but the bigger ones I've put two in. So I just wanna put a little bit more gold in that. Okay, so now that's good. Gold's great. Just puts that sparkle in the piece and now it's come unthreaded. So I've got to re-thread. Bear with me. Okay, so you can see I might just pop a little bit more gold. I can get my thread to catch another one. It's getting a bit short. Those last couple gold beads were tiny little things. I might look for a chunkier one. Yeah, there's one. Okay. That's better. So now I've got some gold actually holding its own there. So I just knot that off. How's everyone's fingers going? Mine are getting pretty tender, doing a lot of stitching. I've got friends coming from Melbourne this weekend. My husband and the friends of ours are all competing in a pinball competition this weekend. So it's not my thing. To be honest, it's not my thing. The noise of the pinball machines drives me a bit loopy. So I'm chief cook. And as they come and go uh, from the event, I think there are two days worth of events for them. It goes all week, but they, you know, some of us have jobs. So the gang from Melbourne, husband and wife, and then a, a, a gentleman whose wife couldn't make it. So there's three actually coming. Um, they're going to camp here for the four or five days and they're going to do the comp on the weekend, the Saturday and Sunday. So I think they get here Thursday, Friday. They're just, we're just hanging around, just, you know, chilling. And I think the, um, Raylene's going to catch up with her family. They're Toowoomba people. <clears throat> so she's going to have her mum and sister come across to have lunch with her. So I'll drop her up at the shopping center and she can spend a bit of time with them and the boys who knows what the boys will do they'll just sit around chat talk pinball i guess and then the monday they're talking about going to movie world so yeah i don't know how old these boys are going to movie world but anyway we'll see they got a pretty big weekend playing pinball so they mightn't be as sparky for movie world by monday but we'll see I just got this thread here, it's the crochet cotton. And I'm wondering if it would be good for seed stitch. Just having a play with it. So Monday, movie world, and then they all head back on Tuesday. So as for making videos, it's probably gonna be a little quiet for the next few days. This one will go to air, what did I say? It's Tuesday today, so you'll probably see this Thursday. And then you may not see one Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or even Monday. But having said that, while they're all off playing pinball in this big competition, um, I might be able to do some work on my pieces and do a few videos. So <clears throat> you may still see me. My friend in Brisbane, Mary Ann, who helps me with um, the charity journals, she, her husband is going to join them as well. So there's a big group going 
And I said to Mary Ann, Saturday, what are we gonna do? Because we don't wanna go, and even Sunday. So we decided we'll work on the charity journals. And we've got 20 of them we're working through to try and get them ready to be gifted uh, at the end of the year to people that are having a tough time and a big hamper is created for each family member and our charity journals, our journals slide into those hampers. So we're making 20. We don't know how many names we will get because uh, Mary Ann's work like selects four or five families. And then in that list of families, you know, it'll be family one, there might be three kids, you get the age, you get the male or female, and then there'll be some ladies and some guys. So we just sort of pick a name. It might be 52 year old mother, uh, 71 year old grandmother, and a 15 year old girl. So we'll then make a journal for those uh, people. So previous years, we get the list in October, November, and it we have to go pretty hard to make them. A lot of work, as you can imagine. And last year, most years it's about nine journals. Last year it was, I don't know, can't remember now, 15 or something. <clears throat> so I was under the pump and I didn't, excuse me, <clears throat> I didn't have a YouTube channel. So I said to Mary Ann, let's just make a heap of them. And we're making two of every design. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so um, then when we get our names, we can just look through the journals and if there's only 10 or six or 15 needed, at least we've got plenty and we may have some leftovers for next year. I think this is the third year we've done it. So Mary Ann and I are going to pull out those journals and do some work on them. I'm sure there'll be something in there we can do. So if you wanted to see that process, I have posted, I believe, a couple videos already about these uh, 20 charity journals. So if you haven't watched that already, that's might be of interest. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, this seed stitch is coming up well. It's quite a chunky seed stitch. I usually do, do fine seed stitch, but because the fabric here is quite chunky, it's like a hemp, I'm thinking I need a fairly heavy cotton. So this is like a, a ply, four ply crochet cotton big roll of it it's pretty common and it's given me quite a chunky seed stitch that I think you would notice on this uh, background fabric okay so that is nearly the end of that thread I might get a couple more stitches so it was just sitting there on the needle because I used it to stitch down the charm the the nest so I thought oh, I might as well just pop a few stitches in but this is real good TV stitching but I'm loving how it looks so that will be tonight's little project so you might see some videos from me. I hope I get to play in the craft room, but we'll see. We've uh, sitting around a bonfire all weekend and uh, chatting with our friends. I'm going to do a lot of cooking on the bonfire, just a, something different. Instead of cooking inside all the time, I'm sort of looking for recipes that I can cook on an open fire. So it should be a bit of fun. It'll give me something to think about too. And plan the meals as they all come and go from the house. And I'm just knotting that off. Yeah, I like how that looks. That's very nice. <clears throat> okay, let's bring that up to the camera. Can you see them there? 
little seed stitches. They'll be really pretty behind all that. It's gonna make that look quite nice. So that will work. So we've done, um, we've done that. I'll, I'll just grab some of this um, cheese cloth here and finish these two off because I'll end up forgetting that I've done that. So just hold one moment, I'm just jumping up. <clears throat> Okay, <coughs> this is the cheesecloth. I got this from um, this website in Australia. Fantastic range of bits and pieces. Another thing you can use is the eyelash yarn. I just saw it on my desk as I walked past it. That wound around things is really pretty too. It just gives that furry feature to the flowers. Yeah, I'm gonna do that instead. Change my mind, I'm off on another tangent. So it's just a case of in amongst all those petals, I'm just pulling the eyelash yarn, weaving it through. It just gives such a pretty little texture. You could stitch it down. <coughs> If you're worried that it might come adrift, but I don't think it will. And maybe when I do the seed stitch, I might just sneak in there and catch the eyelash yarn. Yeah, look at that. Oh, lovely. See how it's just all fuzzy? That's really made those flowers pop now with those little beads and then the eyelash yarn. So let's do the other two. I'll leave that little bit of cheesecloth in there, doesn't matter. Now I've lost the end. Where are we? Oh goodness me. Must be here somewhere. Now it's getting into a knot. Gosh, they, they crochet with this stuff and make scarves and hats, so real furry. It is the worst to crochet with. It is just painful. So now I'm just going to grab my end and just slip it under my little flower, weave it around. That's it. And around there. It's winter here in Australia, so it's everywhere at the moment for sale. But I think they sort of have it in shops pretty standard because it's a bit of a staple that comes out. Yeah, and I've taken that through the centre there. I don't know if I like that. I might just snip that off. There we go. There's the next one done with all the little fibers. Let's have another look. This is the best part. Like probably I love the planning of a piece where we're laying down the background. I love that. It's simple. You don't have to think too much because you don't know where your piece really is going design wise. So you just got to get a background. So I love that. It's not that stressful. <clears throat> And I love the embellishing side of it because that's when we get to just go randomly looking through our craft room to see what we've got and what might work. And if you don't like something, just unpick it. doesn't matter. Try something else. You'll often find that, you know, it, it just comes together. I feel like I need a little bit more lace over this side. No, leave it. I wanted it all on that side and a little planer over here. So we've embellished the little flowers. We've planned our seed stitch, so that'll work. We've got a cluster of beads rolling over that edge of that satin flower. Now I wanted to do some beads up around here as well. This is quite plain and this is sort of telling the story 
of um, the journal. So it's Winter Wonderland. Everything's handmade. Now, I did want to put my initial up there. So I've got some laundry labels with CM on them. And I was wanting to put my initial in somewhere. And I know it's red, but I don't mind that because it's my signature. So it doesn't matter. I just pop them on. And then um, you notice it. So I had thought of working it in up the top here somewhere as it's sort of being a title page. But I don't know. That needs another stitch. That's wobbling too much for my liking. Maybe I have it coming off the page. Hmm. Where's my journal? Where it's going? Because I will probably build the block out a bit. Is that the front? Yeah. So that's the front. It's going to sit on there. Okay. Yeah, I thought I would have a little bit of room. So when this lays down onto the page, I'm wanting to just poke a little bit of lace, additional lace around it. Let's pretend that's the lace. Well, it might even be that. But I would lay down some random pieces to sort of frame it. And this little red guy, he could sit on a corner somewhere. Where is he going to go? Maybe he goes down the bottom there. Yeah, that's where he's going. Okay, let's stitch him on and I'm going to hang him over the edge of my block just a bit so that when that lace comes on to my background, he'll actually look like he's sitting on the lace. Does that make sense? Look, I need to close these beads up. There is going to be a national disaster here in a minute. Here comes Fudge. He's just wandered into the room. Let's put those in there. I do want to do more beading, so I can't pack up too much. Let's get this little initial. Now, these are laundry labels. If you're wondering what laundry labels are about, they were used back in the day. Is there a date? No. And I'm guessing it was when um, houses didn't have laundries. So a lot of people would send their linens out to be laundered. And there'd be businesses like ladies could set up a, a business and launder other people's um, linens in the district. So laundry labels were a way of identifying, don't you jump up fudge, there's beads everywhere here. I'm glad I covered them. So anyway, uh, ladies could identify other clients' linens from each other by their initials. So if you get on Etsy and type in French laundry labels, you will find lots of sellers of them. There's even a few now popping up in Australia. And they'll come two ways. You'll get a mixed pack. And it might be random initials and letters. Because someone might have lived it, you know, um, let's say CM lived at 102 Horsham Road, for example. So you might have on your linens CM 102. That's why there's numbers in amongst the um, labels. So if you do look for them, you can buy a pack of mixed um, numbers and letters, which is a bit of fun, which I've got in there. That was the first way I got some. So it's all mixed. There's numbers and letters, and they can be quite old. So you get stained ones, they're different sizes. So that's a really fun way of doing them. Um, if you look at the, the little 10 there near my thumb, it's got a little design around it. Look at that little guy there, he's tiny. 
so laundry labels are great so then I kept looking and looking and I found someone who was selling my initials and they were in this little box and you push the little box out and out comes the labels so you get there's two little rolls in there so it's a lot of labels and I thought well whenever I stitch something I can now pop my initial on the work because the work is then signed which you should always try and do because who knows where it's going to end up so at least people might have a bit of an idea that it's from yourself so it was really cool to get this little linen marker letters and numbers numbers color fast and it was my cm so if you go looking for laundry labels you might find there's a in etsy you'll the screen will drop down and you can see all of the different combinations they've got and i looked and looked for a little while and then i found a c and an m so i grabbed it and there is probably a hundred in those little rolls so it was where well, i think it was like 14 dollars. so that's not bad considering it's textiles and old and it's my initials so it sort of made them a little bit special okay so as you can see i've stitched the little tag on and it's hanging off so it's just sitting there <clears throat> so now when that goes on i can pop some random lace in there as well let's say it goes around the corner comes up there a little bit i tend to use all the off cuts so it's not all the way around that's too boring i'll use a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of this just to create a little bit of interest so then that little label will be sitting out on the piece so that's my plan for that now what did i want to do so we're getting 50 odd minutes so i might leave it at that because that's going to take forever to upload to youtube and that's quite a lot i think the next thing i'm going to do um, is i'm going to put some of this cluster work up around this corner so it'll sort of balance either either side of it so i'll have a little play with that and then seed stitch and then um, sort of see where else i go from there so who knows okay everyone have a lovely day and hopefully i'll see you all over the weekend with a sneaky couple videos if not if it goes real quiet that means i'm busy cooking food for the gang and enjoying their company so um we'll see what happens okay see ya bye for now